What's up? So it is a little bit later in the day as you just saw I went on a little bit of a hike But really I just wanted to talk about like why I am making this vlog in the first place um, So one like I was mentioning in my last video I honestly just make vlog like miss making vlogs in general But really I realized that like in my business and in so many other aspects of like what I'm doing I have been like doubting my worthiness and what I talk about so much is self-worth I'm obviously a self-worth coach and so this is like a huge part of my life and the things that I think about and I would get so frustrated with myself when I wasn't being productive or I would just get really like burnt out all the time um, and I would constantly just like question myself or feel like you know I had to do things to be worthy or I had to be a certain way or I had to present more professionally or you know there were just all these changes that I had to make to like make myself you know worthy or acceptable. I've been making a really intentional choice to just keep telling myself that like no matter what I'm doing I'm still enough and I'm still worthy and that has honestly been life-changing especially in like the YouTube space and with vlogs and stuff I always am questioning whether I'm doing the right thing or whether I'm you know showing enough or whether I'm too boring and I just want to like put all of those like worries and thoughts aside and just make this vlog so um really I'm kind of making this for myself as like an exercise in just vlogging what I do on like a regular Sunday and not judging it and that I can make a good piece of content just by being myself and sharing like a normal day in my life I guess so I'm gonna make some coffee and let's get into it now. Reading was something that I absolutely loved doing as a child, but over time was something that I began to fall away from. Over time, I really stopped reading fiction books altogether, and now it's something that I've rediscovered, and it's become one of my favorite self-love activities. If you're looking for a new hobby or feeling kind of bored or restless, ask yourself what it was that you loved doing in childhood and return back to that. I promise there's a part of you that's still in love with that activity. later I decided I wanted to meditate and get some journaling done and while I normally enjoy doing this outside it was still about 90 degrees out and it was just a little too hot so 
I decided to do it inside, but a huge tip that I have if you don't have a dedicated space where you meditate indoors is actually to just clean up a little bit. So I clean, sometimes I light a candle or put some oils in my diffuser, and I really just kind of set a relaxing atmosphere because the last thing that I want to do is look at piles of clothes in the corner when I'm trying to meditate and relax. So just a tip for you, since so many of us are stuck at home, just having a clean space helps so much. I have my phone in front of me so I can play a sound bath or some other sort of meditative music, and then I just go ahead and meditate. So occasionally I'll listen to a guided meditation, but lately I've been loving just leading my own meditations, having my own visualizations, and just kind of connecting to my meditative practice intuitively. Then I'll go ahead and do a journaling session, so I'll write down anything that has been on my mind, just kind of where I'm at and what I'm feeling, and anything I wanted to talk about or think about. Um, and after that, I'll go ahead and reach for my tarot deck. So. Um, sometimes in my journaling a question will come up or something that I want to work on or learn more about and that's the question that I will ask the deck. From there I'll just continue to shuffle until some cards fall out or until I feel called to cut the deck and um, depending on that I will intuitively decide and journal upon what that message means for me and my life um, and occasionally if I'm really stuck sometimes I will look through my guidebook that comes with my tarot cards or sometimes even look up the message online but I try to do that very very rarely and only if I'm completely stuck I will make another video on more details of my tarot and meditation practice so leave me a comment if you're interested in that below But um, something that I did kind of want to talk about is actually how good Candide is. So I'm about halfway through, like I said before, and I usually don't, um, I usually don't go back and like read a lot of classics, especially because like with American classics, like sometimes like the authors have like racist pasts or it deals with topics like that. And obviously I'm like willing to like read about race in like a progressive way or like an informative way um and it's okay to read things that are like negative if they're accurate but at the same time like when it comes to classics or novels or stories like this i don't necessarily want to get my head back into that kind of perspective i guess but with candide it was written i'm pretty sure in like the 1700s i'm not sure okay he wrote this <laughs> He wrote this in 1759, so it's honestly crazy that it was written so long ago. The reason that I even bring it up is that it was surprisingly poignant of a read. Like, with everything going on right now, we're obviously in a pandemic, we're obviously in basically a civil rights movement, right? And so with all of that, so much of the topics and the content in Candide is super similar. Like he actually kind of wrote this. It's not really like a complete novel. It's more of like, um, kind of like a philosophical word. And he mainly was addressing the philosophy of optimism. And it kind of mixes in the idea that everything happens for a reason with the idea that everything's working out for like according to God's supreme reason. And obviously this was a time that like religion and philosophy were really big and there was a lot of groundbreaking thoughts coming out in the church and you know, through philosophy as well. And so um, this was something that Voltaire was actually kind of responding to. And it's interesting because he kind of introduces like the idea of optimism coming from this kind of philosophical type of character, this like philosophy teacher type of character. But then through the absurdity of what's going on in the world, there's, you know, wars, there's death, there's all kinds of like terrible atrocities. And this is happening for a reason. And this is according to God's plan and blah, blah, blah. And I think that it's just so interesting because that's where my mind constantly is too, right? It's like always between this idea of like, things happen for a reason and you know, everything will work out with the side of like, 
when is it becoming toxic positivity and when are we just ignoring things especially now with all the bad things happening in the world it's like whether you're looking at celebrities whether you're looking at politics whether you're looking at the economy like in every single arena of life like the fact that it's even an election year like there's just so much going on and so much happening and that's kind of what's illustrated in this book it's like that there's good things and there's so many bad things and how can we continue to stay positive and optimistic without addressing these issues that are going on like we can't just put blinders on and say that everything's going to be okay like we have to you know realize at some point that we need to address what's going on around us and maybe is there some way that we can take control of that and I'm interested to know like what you guys think I know people are talking a lot more about toxic positivity some of you might have also read my um, article on medium about about, you know just appropriation and bypassing in in the self-help world so what's your opinion on this kind of inter intersection and are you more on the side of just always be positive no matter what do you even believe that toxic positivity is a thing I'm really curious to kind of know like where everyone is and like where people in my audience see themselves anyways I'll keep you updated with the rest of the day but I just kind of wanted to um check in in case I don't do anything too much more interesting for the rest of the day but um I will see you guys soon and I will let you know if anything interesting happens <laughs> bye What's up guys? So it is like 10 10. I have no business being as tired as I honestly am, but um, I am really just about to like make myself a sandwich, a little snack, and um, just do my skincare routine and kind of just start winding down for the night um, and get to sleep soon uh, for another early morning tomorrow. But really, I just kind of wanted to like wind down this vlog by saying like, a, I'm just proud of myself for doing this, but B, the reasons that I was so doubtful of myself was that I felt like, you know, my apartment isn't cute enough or I'm not pretty enough on like a regular day or I don't do enough interesting things. And especially with quarantine, I really started to judge myself. And like some people are like going out and having like these great adventures or are starting to travel and are doing things and I'm really just still staying at home as much as possible and I feel like that's the best thing to do especially where I am but I just kind of felt like I always had to perform so much for my vlogs like I always had to exaggerate how good my life was even though I feel like I really was honest in all of my vlogs and I but it was more like the little things. It was more like, oh, I have to make this area as aesthetic as possible or I have to like set things up a certain way or I have to plan my day and the things I do around like, you know, the most exciting day that I have this week or, you know, just little things like that. And I was wanting to make the point to myself that I can still, you know, make content or I can still be like an interesting person even on my regular days and I think part of this is like an exercise in making content but part of it is also just like 
a challenge in personal growth, I guess, like for me to really remind myself that like, it's okay to just be boring and it's okay to just be a regular person. Like that's what I value and love in vlogs so much is just being able to like, feel like I'm hanging out with another person or feel like I have like a day in their life, you know? And I just wasn't able to like see the value in my life though. Like even where I live or like, I live in like such a beautiful place, but like even little things, I just felt like I, you know, don't have like a luxury apartment or I don't have like all these certain things or like my entire apartment isn't like sparkling and white with like a million plants like dumb little things like that would make me feel like I wasn't like a real youtuber or I wasn't a real content creator um and I just needed to get out of my own head so thank you for watching and thank you for hanging out with me on just this kind of cozy summer day um I don't really know what else to say I don't know I mean yeah thank you so much for hanging out with me and um I'll see you next week. Happy healing.